Now, as howling winds echo across the snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice, the delicious cereal shot from guns, in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System, present by special recording, Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest breaking the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King! On you, Husky! <laughs> gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. And the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Our adventure will begin in just a moment. Quote from an employee. I'd give my eye teeth for a worker who's steady, reliable, efficient, and trained to do the job. End quote. Well, there is a new source of workers just like that. Men and women ready, willing, and able to do just the kind of job you'd want them to do. They are the physically handicapped who have overcome their disabilities through vocational rehabilitation. So, Mr. Employer, you're bound to find someone who fits that job opening of yours to a T. How do you obtain a trained disabled worker? Just call your local vocational rehabilitation office. Find out for yourself what survey after survey has proved. Handicapped workers are specially prepared, steady, reliable, efficient. They can match the work performance of the able-bodied any day and often surpass it. You'll find it's good business to hire the handicapped. This message is brought to you as a public service. Sergeant Preston was seated in his office at Mounted Police Headquarters in Dawson City. Across the desk from him sat a husky young man with a square jaw and a pair of steely blue eyes. He had just handed the sergeant an open wallet containing a card of identification. Sergeant Preston read the name on the card. Detective Sergeant Stephen Belford, San Francisco Police. A name Belford's familiar. Any relation to Tom Belford? He was my brother. Oh, uh-huh. Is that why you came to the Yukon Territory? That's right, Sergeant. I intend to find the person who murdered him. I see. I suppose you don't like the idea of my butting in this way? Well, not at all, Sergeant. I can understand how you feel. Besides, we're just as interested in catching your brother's murderer as you are. If there's any way we can cooperate, we'll be glad to. Thanks, Sergeant. I'm glad you're taking that attitude. <laughs> to tell you the truth, I halfway expected the mounted police to give me the cold shoulder. Oh. Why should we? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's that highfalutin-looking uniform you all wear. I suppose you're used to blue coats instead of red ones. <laughs> That's right. Uh, what's the idea of that gold braid that's looped around your neck? You mean this braided cord? Yeah, the end of it is stuck in your pocket. Something attached to it? My police whistle? It was presented to me by the people of the town for capturing two criminals. It's something to be mighty proud of, Sergeant. Wouldn't mind having one myself. It's been very useful to me on a number of occasions, but... Uh, Getting back to the reasons you're coming here... Well, first of all, I'd like to have all the facts on my brother's death. There's not much to tell. But you know, he had a claim near a mining camp called Gold Center. On the morning of November the 2nd, he left his cabin and started off with a gold, a load of gold dust, apparently intending to take it to the bank here in Dawson. That night, sometime after making camp, he was robbed and shot to death. Any clues to go on? Well, although we have nothing in the way of proof, we do have a suspicion as to who did it. Oh, here. Your brother's murder is one of a number of crimes that have occurred recently near Gold Center. It's a strong likelihood that they've all been committed by the same gang. A gang, huh? What do you know about them? Well, frankly, Sergeant, not much. One member of the gang was captured during their last holdup, but so far we haven't been able to make him talk. Maybe I could change his mind. I doubt it. Any idea where the gang's hideout is located? I have an idea they're using a roadhouse near Gold Center as their headquarters. A uh, roadhouse? 
Uh, you mean one of those places like hotels they have along the Yukon Trail? That's right. This particular roadhouse is called the Klondike Tavern. It's run by a Joe Gand. He may be the brains behind the gang, but there again, it's just a suspicion. Looks to me like I'd better go out and have a talk with this fellow Gand. Perhaps there's a better way to go about it than that. Meaning what, Sergeant? As I told you a moment ago, one member of the gang's been captured. His name's Stag Lisbon. We're holding him in jail here in Dawson. So? If you could gain Stagg's confidence, it might be possible for you to get some evidence against the gang. Ah. What's your plan? Well, here's what I have in mind, Sergeant. Suppose I arrange to have you placed in the same cell with Stagg. You'll be posing as a tough sourdough. The following day at the Dawson City Jail, Steve Belford was escorted into the cell block by Sergeant Preston and the Mountie Jailer. Steve was dressed in the rough clothes of a Yukon sourdough. Cells are all occupied, Sergeant. We'll have to put them in here with Stag Lisburn. That's all right. They should make good cellmates. They're two of a kind. Unlock the cell, Bob. Right. All right, Baker. Inside. Better keep an eye on him, Bob. He's a tricky customer. Don't worry, Sergeant. He'll have a hard time breaking out of here. Stag Lisburn was a heavy set, black mustached individual. He eyed his new cellmate for several moments till the two Mounties were out of earshot. Then he spoke. What do they got you in for, mister? What's it to you? <laughs> Feeling kind of sore, huh? Yeah, and I don't blame you. I can think of better places to be than this lousy lockup. I don't aim to stay here long. What are you talking about? You're kind of a nosy gent, aren't you? Yeah, and you're kind of a tough-talking gent, too. You don't like the way I talk? Stop asking so many questions. Uh, he... Steve continued to behave in a sullen fashion. But he knew that Stagg's curiosity had been aroused. Gradually, he allowed himself to be drawn into conversation. Maybe now that you've loosened up a bit, you won't mind telling me what you're in for. Uh, I held up an express driver a couple of miles south of town. Yeah, what happened? Redcoat caught up with me. And I came out and made a getaway while he was bringing me back to Dawson. <laughs> yeah, so that's what Preston meant when he said you were a tricky customer. Yeah, not that the getaway did much good. Preston nailed me the next day down near the Indian River. Yeah, that guy Preston's bad medicine, all right. But I still don't savvy what you meant when you said you don't aim to stay here long. I meant just what I said. You've got a scheme for busting out of here. Let's hear it. Maybe I can help you. Don't worry. I can handle it myself. If you do bust out of here, don't ever think the Mounties won't make things hot for you. You'll need some place to lie low. So? Maybe I can fix you up with a hideout. Take a look out the door and see if the jail is prowling around. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's all right. Coast is clear. Now, what's the deal? Wait till I pull up my pant leg and I'll show you. Holy mackerel. Derringer strapped to your leg. Yeah. My little old ace in the hole. Later on the night, this gun is going to talk our way out of jail for us. Shortly after midnight, the jailer made a round of inspection. As he approached down the corridor, Stag rattled the cell door to attract his attention. Hey, Mooney! Steve was standing just out of sight on one side of the door. What's the matter with you, Lisburn? Yeah, something's wrong with my cellmate. Think he's sick or something. Yeah, and I suppose you want me to come in there and see what's the matter with him. You better think up a new trick, Lisburn. Hey, where is that cellmate of yours? Right here, Redcoat. I've got it. Yeah, and you better start reaching before it goes off. Now, wait a minute, Baker. You're making a big mistake. Shut up and do like I say or I'll plug it. All right, Stag, we two take his keys. Right. Stag took the jailer's keys and unlocked the cell door. Then Steve forced the jailer into the cell, right, held him covered it. while Stag yeah. tied and gagged him with strips of bedding. Oh, still there. I... Yeah. <laughs> I reckon that ought to hold him for a while. Come on, let's get out of here. Yeah. So long, Manny. Give our regards to Sergeant Preston in the morning. <laughs> Early the following morning, Stag and Steve arrived at the Klondike Tavern. The roadhouse was already astir with a few early morning travelers who paid no attention to the two men who had just entered. Stag led the way to an office marked private and knocked on the door. Come in. Stag. <laughs> yeah, boy. In the flesh. How in places did you get here? Busted out of jail last night, thanks to my pal here. Oh, who's he? His name's Steve Baker. They tossed him in the same cell with me. But they didn't know he was packing an ace in the hole. What do you mean? <laughs> he had a derringer strapped to his leg. Steve, Steve, I'd, I'd like you to meet my boss, Joe Gann. Howdy, oh, Joe. Yeah. 
Thanks, said Maybe you could fix me up with a place to hide out. Yeah, I reckon we can do that. And maybe if you're looking for employment, we can do something about that, too. I'm willing to listen. What's your proposition? We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Are you kids there? Are you seeing the exciting homers that your home team makes? Come out to the ball game now as guests of a major or minor league team. Your free ticket is waiting for you right inside packages of Quaker puffed wheat, Quaker puffed rice, Muffet shredded wheat. Quaker Paco 10 has two free baseball tickets. Yes, if you are 12 years or younger, just bring mom or dad or another paying adult and see a wonderful major or minor league baseball game free. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Hurry, get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker Puff Wheat or Rice, Muffet Shredded Wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, just send a box top from the regular package of Quaker Ready to Eat cereals. Send to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Don't wait and miss exciting games. Act now. <laughs> Now to continue. On the morning after their escape from jail, Stag Lisburn and Steve arrived at a roadhouse near Gold Center called the Klondike Tavern, which was run by a man named Joe Gand. Gand agreed to hide Steve from the law and invited him to join the gang. Right now, we'll introduce Steve to Whitey and Dakota. Come on. Pulling aside a bearskin rug in one corner of his office, Joe Gann opened the trap door and led the way down a short flight of steps into a subterranean room where two rough-looking men were seated at a table playing cards. They looked up from their game and exclaimed in surprise as they caught sight of Stag. Blast my eyes if it isn't Stag. Don't tell me you busted out of jail. <laughs> Yeah, they sure didn't turn me loose of their own free will. <laughs> this gent here was Stag's cellmate. They busted out together. His name's Steve Baker. Steve, I'd like to have you meet these two boys here. This one here is Dakota. What are they, Steve? Glad to know you. The other one's Whitey. He's my right-hand man. Hi, Whitey. Howdy. Hey, you know, your face looks kind of familiar, Baker. Yeah, I was thinking that myself. Ever been around this part of the territory before? No, I just came down from Alaska about a week ago. Well, it must be someone else I'm thinking about. A boy Steve wants to join the gang. I'm thinking he may come in handy on that job tomorrow night. Yeah, we can use another man. In the meantime, Steve, make yourself right at home. This is one place the law will never find you. Later that day, Sergeant Preston arrived at the roadhouse. He had trailed Stag Lisburn and Steve from the jail and had decided on the bold expedient of going straight to Joe Gann. His motive was partly to explain his presence in the vicinity and partly to make the jailbreak seem even more convincing. Okay. Come on, fella. Joe Gand greeted the sergeant as he entered. Well, Sergeant Preston, what are you doing out this way? Trailing two escaped prisoners. Uh, escaped prisoners? That's right, Joe. They jail last night in Dawson. I trailed them in this direction, but... King lost their scent a few miles east of here. Oh, that's tough luck. I'm wondering if they've shown up here at the roadhouse. What do they look like? One's a big fellow with a black mustache named Stag Lisburn. St Stag Lisburn? Isn't that the fellow who was captured and holed up near Gold Center a few weeks back? That's the man. Apparently he's heading back to his old stamping ground. And with him is fair-haired, husky, rather youngish, oh, about 31 or 32. Oh, I'm sorry, but they haven't shown up here, Sergeant. Well, keep your eyes open, Joe. If you do see them, let me know immediately. I'll be staying at the constable's cabin in Gold Center. Gonna stick around for a while? Yes, until I get a lead on the two men I'm looking for. Well, if I see them, I'll sure let you know. All right, Joe, thanks. Come along. Oh, oh. Joe Gand waited until the sergeant was gone. Then he went into his office opened the trap door, and descended into the underground room where Steve and the three crooks were playing cards. What's the matter, boy? Something wrong? I just had a visit from Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Preston. Sergeant Always Preston. keep your shirts on. I got rid of them. Well, what did he want? He was looking for you and Baker. 
that he trailed you from Dawson, but his dog lost the scent a couple of miles east of here. Uh, that was a lucky break. Maybe and maybe not. What do you mean? He's aiming to put up at the constable's cabin in Gold Center for the next couple of days while he tries to pick up a lead on you. And that's apt to ruin things for us tomorrow night. You mean we may have to call it off? I don't know yet. He's plenty risky as long as Preston and that dog of his are in Gold Center. Why not get rid of him? What's well, that? Uh, just how would we do that? I'll handle the job. You make it worth my while. I've got a score to settle with that red coat. Yeah, it might be possible at that. I happen to know the constable's out on patrol. He won't be back till tomorrow. How much is it worth to you? Well, say an extra thousand, besides your share of the boodle tomorrow night. Just leave it to me, Gan. Just leave it to me. That night, Steve and Whitey approached the constable's cabin under cover of darkness. The cabin was located in an isolated spot on the edge of town. Two men hid in a grove of trees a few yards away. Yeah, he's there, all right. They can see him through the window. Yeah. Watch out for the dog. He's trying to go for gunman. I'll cover Preston as soon as he opens the door and tell him to order the dog back. And I'll make him tie the mud up. After which, I'll plug him one at a time. Smart idea. Meantime, you go back and keep a lookout in the trail leading into town. See anyone coming? Hightail it back to the cabin and warn me. Right. Okay, get going. I'm going to knock on the door. Steve waited until Whitey had taken up his lookout position some distance away. Then he left the grove of trees and walked up to the front door of the cabin. Steve. Get your hands up and back into the cabin. Oh, hey, boy, I'll boy. Explain when we get inside. What's the idea? I had to put on an act. I'm supposed to kill you and King. You mean someone else is outside? Yeah, a member of the gang. Watching us through the window? No, he can't see us now that we're inside. Oh. I sent him back to keep a lookout in the trail leading into town. Tell me what's happened since you broke jail. Well, in the first place, Lisburn took me to the Klondike Tavern. Yes. You were right about Gand. He's the leader of the gang. He invited me to join up. You learned anything about your brother's murder? No, not yet, Sergeant. But I did learn they're planning to pull some kind of a job tomorrow night. Any idea of what it will be? Uh, Gand is cagey, Sergeant. He's not going to tell me till just before they pull it off. Now, what about this business of killing me? Gan was worried that you and King might trail us back to the ra roadhouse after we pulled the job. So I offered to kill you. I figured it would throw them off guard and give me a chance to communicate with you. Good work. When Constable Allen gets back tomorrow, I'll have him spread the news around town. All right. Now I'm going to fire two shots. The first shot is supposed to be for you and the second for King. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Now, put out the lamp and I'll leave. Before you go, you better take my whistle. Here. You can tell the gang you took it because it's made of gold. What's the idea? Tomorrow night, the constable and I will keep a watch on the roadhouse and trail you as soon as the gang starts out. What we're after is proof of criminal intent, so a jury will convict them. Blow the whistle at the exact moment when we can catch them red-handed. If anything goes wrong beforehand, blow two short blasts as a danger signal. Right. Now I'll get going. The following day, Joe Gann sent Whitey into town to pick up news of the murder. He stopped off at the cafe and soon got into conversation with a sourdough standing next to him at the bar. I suppose you heard about Sergeant Preston being murdered last night? Yeah, what's I was talking about? It. Constable Allen found his body this morning when he got back from patrol. The sergeant's dog was killed, too. So I heard. I wonder who did it. If you ask me, it's a work of that gang. They killed a pal of mine not so long ago. Oh, who was that? A miner named Tom Belfort. I remember that. He was robbed and shot to death, wasn't he? That's right. Too bad his brother Steve isn't up here in the territory. Hey, wait a minute. Did you say he had a brother named Steve? Yeah, Steve Belfort. He's a police detective down in Frisco, and he's a plenty smart one, too. What? Why, what's the matter? Oh, uh, nothing. It just happens I uh, knew a detective down in Frisco by that name. I wonder if it's the same guy. Probably so. Did you know him personally? Sure, I knew both Tom and Steve back in the States. What does Steve look like? A lot like Tom. He's fair-haired, big husky build. Must be somewhere in his early 30s. Has he got a scar across the back of his right hand? Yeah, that's right. Some crook he was trying to arrest slashed him with a knife. That's the man, all right. So you knew Steve, too. By thunder, it's a small world. Yeah, it sure is. We 
we'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Say, kids, which would you rather do? Read about your favorite baseball team in the papers, or see a game on the screen, or be right in the ballpark, yelling for the players on your team, eating hot dogs, drinking soda pop, and having the time of your life? Come out to the game now as guest of a major or minor league team. Walk right through the gate without paying a cent if you are 12 years or younger and bring mom or dad or another paying adult. You can now get a free baseball ticket right inside a package of Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice or Muffet shredded wheat. Or buy Quaker Paco 10 and get two free baseball tickets. Names of teams and dates are on every ticket. Get in on the fun right away. Get a free baseball ticket package of Quaker puffed wheat or rice, Muffet shredded wheat, or Quaker Paco 10. If your store doesn't have the special packages yet, just send the box top from the regular packages of these same cereals to Baseball, Box 5205, Chicago 77, Illinois. Now to continue. Whitey left the cafe and hurried back to the roadhouse. He burst into Joe Gann's office. What did you find out, Whitey? I'll tell you what I found out. That guy Steve Baker is no jailbird. He's a detective. Uh, a detective? Yeah, his real name is Steve Belford. He's a brother of that miner we killed, Tom Belford. Holy mackerel. How'd you find that out? I got it from a sourdough at the cafe. He started talking about Tom Belford's murder, mentioned that Tom had a brother named Steve. When he said that name, I realized all of a sudden why Steve Baker looks so familiar to us. Uh, what do you mean? Well, don't you savvy? He looks like Tom Belford. Uh, hey, that's right. What's more, I asked the sourdough what Steve Belford looks like. And the description checks with Baker, including that scar on the back of his right hand. And you say he's a detective? Yeah. Come on, let's take care of him right now. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Now, what's the matter? If Baker's working in cahoots with the Mounties, he must have told Preston we were planning to pull another job. That means Preston and the constable are probably watching this place right now. Holy smoke, I never thought of that. What are we going to do? When we start out tonight, I'm willing to bet the Mounties will trail us. Well, we lead them into an ambush and get rid of all three of them at the same time. Late that night, the gang left the roadhouse. But instead of heading toward town as Steve had expected, they followed the trail that led northward through the hills. About an hour later, after rounding a sharp bend in the trail, Joe Gann signaled for a halt. Oh! What are we stopping here for? This is the end of the trail for you, Belford. Get your hands up. Hey, you gone crazy. My name's not Never Belford. Never mind, Bluff, and we know who you are. You're the brother of that miner we bushwhacked. And it was you and your gang who killed Tom. Sure. And we're going to kill you, too, and those mounties you're working with. Take his gun, Whitey. Sure, boy. I got it. Now, turn around, Belford. What are you going to do? Plug me in the back? Yeah, eventually. First, I'm going to do this. Oh! <laughs> well, I reckon that'll keep him quiet for the time being. All right, boys, get your guns ready. And stand by to spray those mounties with lead as soon as they come around the bend. Right, boys. Sergeant Preston and Constable Luke Allen had been following the crooks at a safe distance ever since they left the roadhouse. The trail wound along the foot of a steep cliff and was bordered on the other side by a thick forest of pine trees. As the two Mounties approached the point where the crooks were lying in wait, they didn't realize they were heading straight into an ambush. They had nearly reached the bend in the trail when they were startled by two shrill blasts of a whistle. Stop your team, Luke. That means danger. Take cover, Pat! As the two Mounties dashed for cover in among the trees, three of the crooks darted out from behind the corner of the cliff and began firing at them. But they had no time to take careful aim before the Mounties were lost among the darkness of the trees. And as a result, all their shots went wild. A moment later, the Mounties began to return the fire. Dakota fell, and then Whitey, too, was shot down. Realizing his danger, Joe Gann turned in panic and ran back for cover behind the corner of the cliff. But before he could reach a protected spot, King had charged after him and dragged him down. Come on, Luke. It looks like these two won't give us any more trouble. Stay here and look after them. Right, Sergeant. As the sergeant rounded the bend, he saw King pinning Joe Gann to the ground, while Steve battled desperately with Stag Lisburn. All right, Lisburn, you're covered. Get your hands up. All right, all right, I'm doing it. Call him with your guard, Preston. Call him off. I've had enough. Let him up, King. Get That's off. enough, boy. On your feet, Gann. Now then, you and Lisbon back up against that cliff wall and keep your hands high. You're under arrest in the name of the Crown. You're a sight for sore eyes, Sergeant. 
When I heard those shots, I didn't know whether they'd gotten you or not. The signal warned us just in time, Steve. What happened? Somehow or other, they found out who I was. They figured you'd be trailing us, so they stopped here and set up an ambush. And they knocked me out. Knocked you out? Yeah. Luckily, I came to just in time to blow those two blasts. Well, then what happened? You know, Stag turned around and started to shoot me, but I jumped him and grabbed his gun. The other three ran around the bend and started firing at you. Apparently, you got two of them. Yes, the constable's looking after them. Sergeant, these crooks are the ones who killed my brother. Gand admitted. Oh, I, I didn't have anything to do with their killing. It was Whitey who shot him. I'll come clean if you let me off in the murder rap. You sniveling scum. It'll be up to a judge and jury to decide your fate, Lisbon. But you'll all four stand trial. That is, if your two partners survive their wounds. Oh, by the way, Sergeant, here's your whistle back. Oh, thanks, Steve. It sure was a good thing you lent it to me. This isn't the first time this whistle has saved my life. It probably won't be the last, even though this case is closed. We'll return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Weekends are wonderful when you stay tuned to Mutual. Gay entertainment to suit every member of your family puts bright sparkle into your days of fun and relaxation. For anyone who likes quiz games, and that includes just about everyone, there's the kind you like where you can sit back and see how close the contestants come to the answer. There's music, too, of course, on Mutual's weekend schedule. Lowbrow or highbrow, you can take your choice. From full-scale productions of your favorite operas and operettas with all-star singing and dramatic casts to swing your partner sessions of real old-fashioned barn dance jamboree, you can take your choice on Mutual. Your need for late news headlines from the field of sports as well as on the national and international scene is not neglected on the weekend either. 15-minute roundups plus brief five-minute digests come your way regularly. Gather your family around this weekend and enjoy entertainment on Mutual where there's something for everyone. All heard every weekend over most of these stations. Sergeant Preston stands beside the doctor as he probes for the bullet in the chest of a wounded man. Will he live, Doctor? I don't know. Any idea how it happened? No, he stumbled in here and collapsed uh, before he could say a word. His claim's on South Creek. Yes, he's been panning out a lot of gold. Well, he was undoubtedly robbery. Come on, King. We're heading for South Creek as fast as we can. <laughs> what will the sergeant and King find when they reach South Creek? A storm is raging, but the north wind is no more ruthless than the men who kill for the sake of gold. How many men were behind this robbery? How many guns will a sergeant and king have to face? Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Adventures are brought to you every Monday through Friday at this time by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of Quaker Pop Wheat. And Quaker Puff Rice, the delicious cereals shot from guns. <laughs> By special recording in cooperation with the Mutual Broadcasting System. They are a copyrighted feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, and directed by Fred Flowerday. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Pop Wheat and Quaker Pop Rice. So long. This is Mutual, radio network for all America. America.